Hello once more, my friends, lovelies, and everyone in between. I, I was, I was going to go more dramatic, but I couldn't think of a third thing. Anyway, this is another Neckbeard story uh, from our favorite friend, Uber Awesome. Also, if, you know, you're listening to this, hey, hey, man, what's, what's up? You write good stories. So this is a beard cell story, memory lane. Beard cells dip into Satanism. Ooh, and this is perfect because it's Halloween and things are going to get spooky. I don't actually know if they are. I just wanted to... Howdy, Reddit. I'm back again with another story about the one and only Beard Cell. Uh, I'm currently sick, so I haven't left the house to mess with Beardy, but that villain has told me a few stories about him and take place over the years. My favorite story would probably be when he fancied himself a Satanist. Now, the story is mostly secondhand because Bat Villain doesn't have Reddit, so forgive me if stuff's a little messy, but without further ado, let us begin. Picture it. The year is 2015. Obama is in office. Life is good. Well, that's okay. Whatever. Oh, and Ghost debuts at the time, brand new Papa Emeritus III. <laughs> I like Ghost. I guess that was a pretty big deal, too. It kind of was. Because around this time, Beard Cell suddenly decided he worshipped Lucifer. Oh, honey. Now, his family's apparently a Christian family, so you can imagine this was a problem. Hmm. So how exactly did Beardy decide this was a good idea? Well, his horny 12-year-old brain found out that one of the older girls, 16 at the time, at his school was really into black metal bands. Like, really into it. As in, she burned a crucifix levels into it. According to Bat Villain, Beard Cell described this girl as, and I quote, a delicate flower waiting to be plucked. Ew. At least it started like that, as Batvillain puts it. He got a bit lost on the way to Pussyville. Well, over the next few weeks, in a bid to impress her, he drew upside-down crucifixes on his arms, wrote only using his left hand, and yelled Hail Satan in the school cafeteria because Satanism? He's trying too hard at this point, right? Yeah. Well, it gets better. Oh, no. Apparently, he decided he needed to get into her music, too. And that's how he discovered Ghost. Personally, I think this might have been an improvement. That's not in the story. That's just from me. And this was the only satanic band that he listened to. And he assumed that just knowing this band would work. So he spent weeks listening to one of their albums, apparently got posters for his room, and whenever his parents weren't looking, he would turn the crosses they kept in the house upside down. He would be grounded for this after his mother caught him doing... So, mild justice? Eh? After about a month of this routine, he built up enough confidence to decide to make a scene. I mean, ask out the delicate flower. So, how does he do this? Horribly, but details. Where do I start? Oh, yeah. The makeup. You see, he decided to get with his... To get with this delicate flower, he needed to look the part. So... He painted his face in a really shitty pop emergent style. Oh, like a terrible skull. Oh, oh no. According to Batville, and the lines were so sloppily done that even she was straight. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It doesn't really say much, but uh, Google pop emergent and imagine all the makeup being sloppy and smudged. It's. Mm. Second, he dressed up in black robes, except he didn't have black robes, so he just borrowed one of his mother's dresses and wore a hoodie over it. <sighs> and lastly, he painted his nails. Apparently the nails weren't so bad, so points there. So now that he looks the part, what does he do? Well, he stands up on a lunch table, dressed like the anti-pope, and calls out her name six times. Wow, tote satanic. Much, much evil. Once he has her attention, he starts by paraphrasing a song. Specifically, he says, Oh, we are two star-crossed lovers reaching out to the beast with many names. Oh, See, that only works in this song because he's, like, charming and you're not. Starting off strong. Wonderful. Then he goes on a spiel about some ritual that Bat Villain didn't really pay attention to, but the end of the whole thing with Come be my sexy demonic priestess and sin with me. <laughs> oh no. To the surprise of literally no one, she says no and leaves, and then reports him to the principal for making comments of a disturbing and sexual nature. 
he was given two weeks of in-school suspension. I was not allowed to be anywhere near the poor girl. Apparently, on the way home, he kept ranting because the stupid slut had no appreciating for his effort. So the incel mindset started young. Does he drop the Satanism after this? No, he keeps it up. For some reason, he decided to project his heartbreak through Satanism. So basically, he'd always raise his hand in class by making the sign of the horns and yelling, Hail! And he drew messy pentagrams on his arms. Supposedly the circle was crooked, but to be fair, can anyone draw a perfect circle? <clears throat> and he'd always make pentagrams with chalk, put some candles around, do some ominous Latin chanting, quote unquote. This may seem like disturbing behavior, but it's worth noting that the lines of the pentagram were messy, uneven, candles were stolen from his mother's room and were flower scented. Oh, an anonymous Latin chanting was basically him pronouncing vowel sounds in a really weird voice pretending they meant something. Yes, nothing says welcoming the dark beast like lavender. Throughout this whole Satanism phase, he always interrupt his family saying grace by saying something about God being a false shepherd or that Satan was the one true savior. And my personal favorite... I'm much more enlightened than you sheeple. Mmm. Mmm, it's too good. It's too good. Also, he'd start fights at school with the more religious students, calling the Christians kidly fiddlers in the making. Wow. Calling the Islamics terrorists. Classy. And all the Jewish students, penny-grabbing fi- Oh. Oh, he's just a winner all around, isn't he? That honestly hurts to type. It hurt to read. He, for some reason, chose to spare the Buddhists, but I guess thank God for that, because I really didn't want to have to type out more bullshit. <laughs> I didn't want to have to read it either. His parents initially let him suffer the consequences at school, but left him alone at home because they just assumed it was a phase, keyword being initially. See, after the drawing of a pentagram on a painting of his grandmother just because the old whore was wearing a cross. Wow, really? They grounded him, scolded him, threatened to send him to church camp in Texas if he didn't drop the act. Yeah, that worked, apparently. He dropped it, and pretty soon he went back to normal neckbeardy shit, like Lolly, oh, Lolly and Shota. Oh, if you don't know what that means, don't Google it. Ugh. I'll throw up in my mouth a little. So this is the end of the story. Let me know if you want to hear more about Beardy's sordid past or some of his newer hits, because once I'm healthy, I'm sure as shit going to get back to rustling his jimmies. You know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta love the guy who, uh, who decides that Satan is his one true dark master. Until mom and dad says he needs to stop. Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, and subscribe. And also I have a Patreon because, you know, I'm, I'm poor. and Sometimes I need a dollar. Okay, I'm going to drink more and read terrible neckbeard stories. I love you all. Farewell. Hail Stan. Oh, fuck, did it wrong. God damn it.